Okay, I'm going to be doing a tutorial today on how to hook up your e-kit to be played through, um, whoops, hold on here, hitting my microphone, uh, through MIDI instruments. And um, this works on Easy Drummer, um, on Addictive Drums, on Superior, any of those. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is your actual hardware connections. Uh, and there's many ways to do that. Um, I'm just going to show you, uh, in my case, I have a Roland TD3. So my electronic drum set, the drum brain, the thing that makes all the noise, if, you know, that's what I call a drum brain, sound module, so, you know, um, on the side of it, I just have these five pin MIDI connectors, um, on some modern, um, yeah, on some modern brains you'll have a USB connection that can be utilized for MIDI output. Um, I think the DM10 has it, um, as well as like the Alesis MIDI I.O. Um, so th you can either use the USB connection or these five pin connections, but those are what you're going to be using. And uh, the first way I'll cover to get MIDI into your computer um, so if you don't, if you have a, like a simple sound card, which a lot of people do, and there's no MIDI inputs on the back of it, what you can do is these are really inexpensive. Is just pick up one of these cables. What it does is it converts MIDI into a USB port. Uh, so you just plug the USB into your computer. These are plug and play. You just plug them in, and uh, they pretty much should work. Um, in some cases, you might need a driver, but they're nice because they give a nice readout of when it's sending MIDI or receiving MIDI. So you know when they're working um, and when your computer just isn't paying attention. So that's one way of doing it if you have a simple sound card. If you have a sound card with a MIDI connection on the back of it, uh, say for example an Mbox 2, what you can use then instead, here's another example of a USB to MIDI cable, uh, is just a standard 5-pin to 5-pin MIDI cable. And you would plug that from the output of your brain's 5-pin MIDI port uh, to the input of your audio interface's MIDI in. Make sense? Pretty straightforward. Okay, so once you've got everything connected, we'll launch Cubase, new project. Um, I'm going to use Addictive Drums for this. And I'll just wait for this to load up here. <clears throat> Um, one thing I would recommend is having your MIDI, or having, excuse me, your drum set on uh, before you launch Cubase, because sometimes it doesn't like to cooperate <laughs> until you have everything uh, set up. All right, so once we have, and it's telling me my audio card isn't plugged in. Uh, so once you have this set up, um, and I'll show you how this... Uh, how I did this because uh, right now I have it multi-tracked where Addictive is playing through individual tracks and you can see I'm using Cubase plugins for each one. Um, I'll have another tutorial up for that. What you want to do is you want to have a MIDI track routed to Addictive Drums. You can see that over here. So you got Addictive Drums and you want to select your MIDI input where you have your uh, drum set connected to. If you have, if you're using a five pin to five pin MIDI connection um, where you're plugging it into the back of your audio interface, you want to select your audio interface as an option. I have my Roland plugged into a Profire 2626 so I would select that as the input. Now the Profire isn't on right now because it was acting up. Um, if you have it plugged into a USB to MIDI cable then what you want to select as an input is your USB to MIDI cable makes sense again this is pretty straightforward this is your MIDI input on a MIDI track this is your MIDI output It's completely different than audio routing where you have like stereo out this is just where we're sending data if that makes any sense <laughs> Uh, so once you have that all hooked up, you should be able to strike your e-kit and have it play sounds through addictive drums. Now, the one thing I want to point out um, is a lot of drum libraries uh, like Stephen Slate 
um, addictive drums, BFD. They come with specific setups for working with specific drum sets. Like I have a Roland TD3. Well, if we go over to, yes, I own Easy Mix. <laughs> If we go over to addictive drums now this is not available in version one so if you cracked it fuck yourself okay so if you <laughs> uh if you have um if you bought it and you have the update i don't remember what update it was but if you get the update um, when you go to beats you'll see this little map preset and under here they have the alesis dm10 pretty much all the Roland kits, um, some of the Yamaha kits, um, the original Addictive Drums kit, a general MIDI kit, which if you don't see your drum set under here, uh, that's a fairly safe bet to go with, that the GM will work. If the GM doesn't work, you can fiddle around and maybe try some of these other settings, but uh, usually if all else fails, go with that. Now in my case, I have a TD3, so I'm going to have it selected a TD3. And th that should automatically, if my drum kit's brain is set to the default factory setting, it should automatically map correctly on every single drum set uh, that you load into this. Which is really nice, because that's basically a no-fuss way of doing it. Um, with Superior, for example, I think the ride is backwards. Um, I know there's been some user-created maps that have converted it. Um, and in, uh, to do a map, just to show you how to do a map, you would go to, normally this would say no drum map, go to drum map setup, and you go to functions, you go to load, and you would load your drum map wherever you stuck it, <clears throat> which they're in here somewhere. <laughs> uh, I just want to look for it. They're there, but uh, you would load the drum map, close this out, and then it would show up under this list and you would select it and use that. Um, you can Google around if you need one, but for the most part, um, for example, you know, for addictive drums, that's how you do it in addictive drums. Um, in BFD, Echo, it's um, under tools or something like that. You can select, they have a few different kits. They don't have the a lot of the rolling kits, but I, they have a couple of rolling kits and they, they map just fine. Um, and Steven Slate has some preset kits that work with specific Roland drum sets. Uh, it's kind of nice to have a Roland. It's pretty compatible with pretty much everything. Uh, so that's the tutorial for how to play drums through um, your virtual software. Uh, I would have demonstrated uh, that it worked. But my drum set is all the way across the room, so it wouldn't really have worked logistically. But uh, I promise you, if you have it hooked up like this, it will make noise. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment and I will answer any that I can. Thank you.